angels! Welcome back to another video where we review Marvel media properties. Uh, my name is Rowan. I am Jordan. And today we are talking about the penultimate episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, so this episode starts out... Exactly where we left off. Yeah, and a lot of action already. It's a lot of action towards the beginning of the episode, not as much towards the end. Yeah, pretty much none towards the end. Yeah, which lends itself more to the fact that it's not really episodic and it's just one long film. Mm. Like, it's not a usual episode in terms of beats, I feel. Or no. And it was a... It arcs. Was, it, it was good action at the start. It was really well... Um, it was really well done. Really well executed. And... You it, can tell that John Walker has just absolutely lost it. Uh, He's yeah. lost his shit. Uh, Sam is just like, just you know, if you part, if you plead that you know Lamar was your best friend, blah blah blah, your background, maybe they'll let you off, like with a pardon. Uh, just you know, you need to give me the shield now. And then John, like, he's like, just, oh, you almost got me. He's just gone crazy. Like he is just so paranoid, and mm. there's something wrong with him. He, it's gone to his head. Yeah. And they have this massive fight. And it's John is basically trying to kill them. He is not holding back. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Bucky and Sam tag team him basically and just take him down. Hmm. The fact that Falcon was indoors in this warehouse and they still had to do choreography for him, and I think they did it really, really well. Mm-hmm. Um, when he took, when he swiped John's legs out using his wings and turned and stood up like yeah. that, I still remember that. That was like such a standout part of it. Um, and they end up getting the shield back it reminded me of getting the gauntlet from Thanos on yeah it did to me as well when they were like holding him down and trying trying to get it it off off. his arm yeah and um they end up breaking his arm they break his arm yeah it's fucking brutal uh and John Walker also rips Falcon's wings off he rips them clean off clean off and they're broken done Bucky ends up having the shield but drops it for Sam doesn't say anything and Sam's trying to get all the blood off which Mm. is I think again another really like trying to clean the shield like yeah, I should never have given it away I need to get all this blood off yeah, of it yeah it was a very poignant moment Falcon and Torres Torres is back um, uh, and he's like oh US government are, are taking control now with Carly and the flag smashes and mm. everything that happened with John so the government are, are stepping in um, so you guys go back to the US and Torres sees the bag with his wings and he's like oh what happened to these and he's like oh don't worry um, and he's like don't you want to take them with you and Falcon's like keep them which is a nod to Torres being the next Falcon. Um, in the comics. So he might show up at the end Yeah, with, in, in a with, wings with, or with those wings on. Yeah. yeah, they go back to the US and you see John in like a hearing in his military gear um, basically getting completely stripped of everything that he They're had. like, no pension, no pension, nothing. Like, he gets no title, he gets to keep no rank. Like, they basically strip him of everything. <sighs> And then he starts to kind of, like, he's very polite at first, you know, but then he gets very angry very quickly, which kind of proves their point. Yeah. Uh, he gets pissed off really easily and starts yelling at them, and they're just like, bro. Very <laughs> unhinged. Yeah. Uh, so he goes out, and his wife's there, who looks like AOC from uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot. the US, the US politician. From the US. I love yeah. that show. The cameo turns up here. Yes, yeah, so Julia Luis. Dreyfus, I think you pronounce it. Dreyfus, yeah. yeah. Val or call me Val. Yeah, she like she she is like Consti- Constantino or Val. Contessa. Contessa, that's it. Contessa. Um, Contessa Val. I was like, that's the power broker. I bet it is. And um, <laughs> she is saying she's kind of like siding with him. You know, it's like, oh, these bloody guys. What are she's they? She's like, I would have killed him too. Yeah, I would have killed him too. And don't worry, I know you don't have the shield, and it's not technically government property, so they can't force you to give it back either way. Mm. Um, and she's like, the best decision you will ever make is pick up when I call you. Um, and then disappears, and that's and she all gives him a card that's blank, it's yeah, black just... and white on on black on one side, white on the other, and it's just blank. And he's like, oh, "What the fuck?" Empty. Um, we see the boat again, and Sam's sister and his nephews again, and they're trying to fix it. And essentially, they tried to sell the boat, but they couldn't because it was a wreck. So Sam's like, "Okay, look, well, I will fix the boat, and we'll get it set up, and then we will sell it." Um, once it's fixed, there's a lot of downtime in this episode. I feel like kind of recovering from the dark dark time of like episode four and the beginning of this episode mm. there's a lot of like family you know orientation like they call in a load of favors to get the boat finished 
Bucky shows up to help, like things like that, and it's just really nice. It's a nice episode. It, it is a really like yeah. It, it's it's what I kind of needed to picture the Bucky Sam relationship. Like this one really yeah. solidifies it, and I actually believe it now. And the back and forth banter between them, but they are really good friends mm. because before this, you'd never really saw them as friends. They always just had that back and forth, like fighting with each other almost yeah. but now it seems like they are really actually friends and they really do trust each other because they were fighting well together they managed to um basically fix the boat i think fix that, it yeah. completely yeah and bucky kind of flirts with his sister which i think is really funny yeah it uh, is funny. and i would love to see that <laughs> bucky is finds zemo at the sokovian monument um, memorial memorial he goes there and <clears throat> Zemo's like, oh, so I suppose you're here to kill me. Bucky goes to shoot him, but the gun's empty. And he's like, you know, it's not who I am anymore. Um, Zemo's saying to him, like, Carly's too far gone, blah, blah, blah. You know what you, you, need, you, know what you have to do. And I think kind of Bucky's trying to prove to him that people can change. Because I think Bucky is more on Sam's side where he thinks she can be talked over. He's trusting Sam a bit more. So he's proving to Zemo there when he, you know, he took the bullet, mm. all the bullets out that like he very easily could have killed him but he's chosen not to yeah. um because he's reformed and i think that's a really good like poignant moment for bucky's character growth as well as like zemo because zemo's so black and white about everything to like yeah. see that from him as well um and he gives them he hands them back to the wakandans yeah which i think is good for because ao called him white wolf again instead of james when they had that fight but she room. also does say like maybe stay out of wakanda for a bit probably don't yeah. come back for a bit there's a really nice scene where bucky sees um he wakes up to uh sam's nephews as well like playing with the shield and i think that's nice it's nice for bucky to see that like because we see later on in the episode he says that the shield is the only thing he has or close enough to family mm -hmm. and i think that scene with seeing the kids playing with it is like it's not ruined by what john did yeah they don't like they you know it's still a symbol um, and he's he's glad that he's like, okay, the kids, you know, kids still idolise it and they still look up to yeah. it. Yeah. So Sam goes to visit um, Isaiah and he's kind of... Sam's changed at this point. I feel like his demeanour has changed. His attitude has changed from the very first time that he went, they went to see Isaiah. Yeah. So Sam's walking through the neighbourhood and the, the nephew or the grandson, grandson, the grandson is like, oh, whoa, whoa, where are you going, man? And he's just like, I'm going to see your grandfather. And the kid's like... Oh, okay. He's at the back. <laughs> he's, okay, he's at the back. Whereas before, he's very, very defensive and very like, no. I don't know if it's because Bucky was with him and he's white, but yeah. Um, Sam goes into the back to talk to Isaiah. We get a bit more of his backstory. I felt like some of it was repeated, like the whole experiments thing. Is like we knew, we did know that, mm. and we knew quite a lot of what he was already saying. I feel like some of the dialogue maybe could have shifted or changed to be like, you remember I said I was experimented on, and then go into detail rather than I was experimented on for years blah 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 like mm. they experimented on my blood like we already knew that we the, the stuff we didn't know was that they tried different serums on different people and they didn't know that it why it worked on him but like it, he did repeat some stuff where I was a bit like okay like move on we know this and it kind of took me out of the scene a bit of like you know the horror that what he went yeah. through it's interesting because it like I didn't really notice that I suppose it, it was really like gripping for me just mm -hmm. the conversation between them both. Um, an interesting thing as well I don't know if you picked up on this but Isaiah what Isaiah said that he did is this exactly the same thing that Steve did. Yeah, he Steve, went behind Steve enemy lines. Steve went out went out and got the Howling Commandos back and he was loaded for it and he was Captain America for it. Isaiah did the same thing got his guys back who were experimented on was jailed for thirty plus years and experimented yeah. on. It's ridiculous. It is gross, and I think the the conversation that happens between Sam and Isaiah about how they would ne they being you know America the American government would never let a black man be Captain America, but he also says no self respecting black man would want to be, which I think Sam does struggle with mm. um, after this, and it's good to see that conflict within Sam because Isaiah's right in a way, but also he has been through so much, so he wouldn't ever see the world in a different way. Yeah, but. The way his eye is just like, you think things have changed? Like, no. Mm. And it, it, he's so right because it's reflected in today's America as well. Not just America, the UK, all over the world. Mm. Racism is still rampant. It's just kind of more sinister now and a bit more subtle. Yeah. 
So um, it was a very hard conversation, and I'm sure it was even harder for you know black people to watch and listen to and yeah. resonate it was with. Probably like one of the most poignant scenes in MCU. Like yeah. The entire, like I'm surprised they went down that road and did something that like. I hope there were black writers on the episode. I hope so. We'll have to look. But yeah. I, I, I do hope so. Um, it goes to Sam and Bucky and they're like just practicing throwing the shield um, around, which is a nice little scene as well. Cause... It's a really nice scene, but it felt like a finale scene. Mm. It was weird because it felt like the end of the series, like the end of their partnership, other than Sam saying, oh, I'll call you when I get a lead on Carly. Yeah. It was a very, it was a very emotional part. They admit that they're partners and that they're working together. They just have a really good conversation about it. Bucky apologizes to Sam. He says, "Me and Steve, you know, we should have realized what it would mean to give the shield to a black man and what that pressure would be on you and and what it would mean in America these today, not let alone back in the forties. Yeah. And it's a very good scene, and I I really really enjoyed it. But at the same time, it felt like they were leaving. And then the the seat the where last bit where away. they're walking away from each other it was a really good shot. I really liked yeah. it. But it felt like a finale scene, and like they were like that would have been good for the ending. So I hope the ending bit is just as good as that. I think. It, 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 I definitely see what you mean now that you said it, and I can hundred percent see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it did. It did feel like a finale scene, a uh, finale like right at the end of the episode, like a nice calm bit at the end. It um, feels like the calm before the storm, though. I feel like loads of shit is going to go down that's in the what last I was episode. Gonna say, now. Yeah. That that finale scene was kind of like the calm of the arc of them, their characters, and like their friendship. And now yeah. this finale is going to be all out. This is like MCU action comic book shit that's going to happen yeah. in this finale now. Um, because <clears throat> the GRC were voting for 20 million of their refugees to go back to their home countries in New York, which is where Carly was, uh, and the Flag Smashers and the rest of the Flag Smashers go to New York. Sharon's on the phone <clears throat> and she calls in a favor and she's like, I'll, I'll pay you double this time. She's speaking to Batroc, which makes the first mission that Batroc was doing probably for Sharon. That makes Sharon either Sharon the power broker or Sharon working <sighs> very close to the power Imagine broker. Imagine if Sharon was the power broker. That would be sick. Because the scene, I think, in episode two or episode three, where she's calling them, she's like, the power broker is pissed. And she's pissed. Yeah. <laughs> so it could be like a nice little... I <laughs> hadn't thought of that. Yeah. That's a really good theory. Oh, that would be so good. Um, which is maybe she, why she's like, oh, we've got a problem. Because she's like, I don't want the pardon to get back to the US because I'm making bank in Madripoor and I'm the power broker and I've got all this power. Don't fucking send me back to the US because mm. I'm actually doing stuff here. Um, maybe Shit. Contessa's working, probably Contessa's working for the power broker if, if John's got the serum and or the serum. The and, serum. The serum. <laughs> And uh, it sounds like the Mandarin in uh, Iron Man 3. Yeah. So there's still, still a lot of players in the game. And essentially, Carly and the Flag Smashers hijack the GRC meeting where they're doing the vote. With Batroc's help. With Batroc's help. Because Batroc's so, like, I just want to kill the Falcon. He's yeah. Like, That's why I'm here. So you thought that the Flag Smashers were working with Sharon, maybe. Mm. And then I thought maybe she's hiring Batroc, but also Flag Smashers are hiring Batroc or trying to... Or maybe she, maybe she's hired Batroc. Batroc has contacted Flag Smashers to be like, I want to help you. I think that he Batroc is gonna like double cross Flag Smashers somehow. It was it was a weird one when Sharon was calling Batroc and Batroc showed up to help the Flag Smashers because it was very much like what? Yeah, because obviously like, the what? power broker's pissed off at Carly for Carly taking for, all the serum, and then they've now all been destroyed. Yeah, and John was the only one left who'd taken the serum, so yeah. Yeah. So there's still a bit of confusion there, a bit of mystery to wrap up in the final episode. And there was a really, um, this, the scene, I think, which solidified, like, the arc and the character between Sam and Bucky when they're throwing the shield around, is Sam as well, like, peak Captain America sort of speeches that he was making to Bucky. Because he used to, like, you know, we said before, he used to talk to PTSD veterans and things like that. Yeah. Um, he says to Bucky, he's like, you're still having those nightmares, and in a second but he's like yeah all the time and in his fucking therapist he was like no no yeah right back to the beginning yeah and, and him back to and the shit therapist just like the 
he's saying you've got to be a service to them like you don't you're trying to make amends but you're trying to make yourself feel better you've got to make these people feel better yeah be he, of service he to points them. out that there are people you could give closure to and it's you know harks back to the the old man yes whose son he killed that he still didn't tell which we're definitely gonna see in the in the finale yeah um, i hope we do yeah Mm. There's a training montage. Oh yes, the training montage, which is really, really good. I just like training montages. It's good, They're just yeah. really good. It's cool music. You see him like throwing the shield about and you see him failing quite a few times. I like that. And just seeing him like get used to it and finally like kind of accepting that he's gonna be Captain America mm. or at least he's gonna use the shield. Um one bit a thing he does say to Bucky as well is like you gotta stop letting people tell you what you're meant to be. Mm. It's just very peak, like you said, Captain America speeches, like be yourself kind of yeah. thing. Don't let anyone else um, dull your sparkle, <laughs> which is, I think, also him, him talking to himself because Isaiah was saying to him, no self-respecting black man. He's like, I can't let other people yeah. dictate what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, I need to do what I think is right. There's a really good parallel between him and the boat as well, like um, Black History and the boat that he mentions, because mm. he's going to paint over the names of his parents on the boat, and Sarah's like, no, no, you can't do that. Um, and he's like, yeah, I know, it's erasing our history. And he's Which like, is what Isaiah <laughs> talked about, they erased me. They, no one knows about him. And that part as well where Sam's like, we've got to tell people like what happened, and Isaiah says, you think I won't be dead in a day if you tell people... So Sam being proud of his history and like keeping that history and wanting to be better, like just forge a better world essentially for people is just peak Captain America. Yeah. Like we do also see um, John Walker visit Lamar's parents uh, and just essentially saying like I'm sorry, uh, I tried to save him and stuff like that. But John Walker tells them that. Like he's trying to justify the fact that he killed that man. Mm. He say he says to them that that man killed Lamar, which is obviously not true. Yeah, and he knows that because Sam and Bucky told, and he knew that wasn't the case because he was yeah. there. But Sam and Bucky said he didn't kill him. You know yeah. that. And I don't know if that's part of his delusion of like trying to make it seem in, to justify in his head that it was okay, because or if it was him just trying to give them peace because he did say to them like, "I hope that gives you some peace and some mm. closure," which I kind of do understand. But did you see the looks that Lamar's, I'm assuming, younger sister were give it, was giving to John in that scene? No. Because the, f the films that everybody was taking around, I'm assuming she might have seen because the guy saying, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Yeah, so yeah. I think she knows he's full of shit um, and was like, mm, yeah, all right then, yeah. sure. They, <laughs> can Bloody you imagine? Someone kids. probably did make a TikTok of that fucking, yeah. to some music. <laughs> So the they, they, they made um, that POV, I'm the guy that John Walker killed. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. It wasn't me. <laughs> um, and then right at the end, the post credit scene, we see John Walker cosplaying. Um, <laughs> and making a cosplay. <laughs> he's going to Comic-Con. He's got, he's got a Comic-Con. Um, he but... still starts, like, he's banging out metal to make a shield. Yeah. And it's just like, what are you doing? Some steel shield that is going to be ridiculously heavy. He's not going to be able to... Th well, he might be able to throw it because he's a super soldier now. But... Yeah, he could, he probably easily can carry it and throw it, but it's not going to bounce back to him, is it? No. And he's putting... If they do have it bounce back, I'm just going to be like, that's fucking bullshit. He's like, I, I want him to, like, throw it, um, like, majestically into it, just, like bounce and break and shatter apart yeah. or something but he's, he's like spraying it red and he's and spraying he's the whole his um, medals his medals of honor yeah. on it as well so yeah he's which i think on. like you is that your u.s soldier u.s is... agent maybe oh u.s agent yeah it must be i don't know I, it must be his origin i don't know much about u.s agent um i just knew that i think john walker was meant to be him or something like that yes or... yeah john walker is u.s agent um, yeah i honestly thought that the u.s were going to obviously strip him of everything but then kind of going to get in contact with him again and be like look you know you'll you as yeah, you are super soldier be our, ops, be our black yeah. ops yeah u.s agent that's what i thought super the soldier, yeah but maybe they thought he looks fucking crazy like we're yeah, just gonna he just is. wash our hands hinged, of him yeah so that's fair enough like for once the government did a good job of dealing with that completely stripping of him and removing him from yeah care. um bucky, bucky brings a case uh just like a suitcase or like a briefcase to mm. uh, Sam when they're fixing the boat. And he's like, this is a gift from the Wakandans. And I knew we were going to see it this episode. And like, but like he gives him the case and he doesn't open it all the way until the end. Um, and he opens it and he's like, what the fuck? And then I was like, you were like, 
please show it. I was like, if they don't show it, I'm gonna be so fucking pissed. But I think it's you think it's gonna be new wings, but I think it's gonna gonna be be just a suit. I think it's vibranium wings. I think it's just a vibranium suit. You know, like Black Panther's suit. Do you think so? Yeah, because if the other guy's gonna be Falcon and he's got the wings, they can't both have wings. Yeah, but I mean, it make him feel inadequate. He's like, yeah, I'm Falcon. It's like, oh yeah, but you know. Yeah, but you've got shitty wings now. No, I've got, got vibranium, vibranium wings. wings. So maybe they're massive as well. Maybe they're like yeah. 10 feet long or something. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm excited to see what what's in the box. Yeah. What's exactly. in the box? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Mystery unboxing <laughs> by <laughs> Sam. <laughs> anyway, super duper excited for next week's finale. Uh, and then Loki will be after that in June. Mm-hmm. So... Next week's finale will be our last Marvel thing for now, but on Sunday we will be going through the first half of Shadow and Bone, which is coming out also on Friday, but it's all dropping at once. So we're going to do four episodes, do a review on Sunday, next Sunday, and then four episodes and do another episode of reviewing of the last four episodes of that. I've said episodes way too many times. A part one and part two of reviews of Shadow and Bone. Yeah. <laughs> I'll also be doing my quarterly wrap up this week as well as my new TBR game coming out on Friday 30th of April. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah. yeah, that's it for this episode. We will see you again next week. <laughs>